In this lesson, I'll show you how to use period functions to model behavior. The question reads, a region that's 30 degrees north of the equator averages a minimum of 10 hours of daylight in December. Hours of daylight are a maximum of 14 hours in June. Let x represent the month of the year with 1 for January, 2 for February, 3 for March, and 12 for December. If y represents the number of hours of daylight in month x, use a sine function of the form y is equal to a sine bx plus c plus d to model the hours of daylight. The first thing that we can do is find out what the amplitude is. We know that it goes from a maximum of 14 to a minimum of 10 in December. Therefore, to find the amplitude, what we do is take 14 and subtract it from our minimum, that's equal to 4, and divide by 2. 2 represents our amplitude, and make sure that your amplitude is positive, and it is. So, so far, our equation is y is equal to 2 sine bx plus c plus d. Next, we can find d. d represents the translation of the waveform up or down. We're told that it's a maximum of 14 and a minimum of 10. This means that halfway between 14 and 10 is 12. Therefore, d represents 12. Let's write that in. We have y is equal to 2 sine bx plus c plus 12. The tricky part is finding b and c. b represents your cycle. And to find your cycle, you can use this relationship. The period obviously is a 12-month period because there are 12 months in a year. I'll substitute 12 into where we have period is equal to 2 pi over b. Therefore, if we solve for b, we end up with b is equal to 2 pi over 12, and that is equal to pi over 6. This can be now substituted into our growing equation. y is equal to 2 sine pi over 6 x plus c plus 12. Now we need to find C. C and B are both related to the phase shift, and the formula for that is here. To find the phase shift, you have to remember what a sine wave looks like without any phase shifts or translations. It starts at 0 and 0, makes its way up, then all the way down, and then back to where it started from. Now we're told that January is x is equal to 1. So technically, our graph will be a little modified. We have 1 here that represents January, and then 2 is February, and so on. To find the phase shift, which will represent C, we need to find out where our waveform starts. So where along the x-axis does our waveform begin? To find that, we need to use the middle value. Now remember, December needs to be x is equal to 0, or you can interpret it as x is equal to 12. January will be x is equal to 1. So let me write this down for you. February will be x is equal to 2. March is x is equal to 3. Then comes April, May, and June, where it reaches its maximum. Now the middle month here is March. I'll represent that on my graph, where this can be 3. And this month represents when the sine wave will begin. So our sine wave begins here. It makes its way up to its maximum sometime in June. And if we continue this to the left, it will reach December when x is equal to 0 or 12. That means our phase shift, rather than starting over here when sine normally starts, has been shifted 3 units to the right. So our phase shift is equal to 3, and we'll use the formula phase shift is equal to negative c over b to find out the last letter that we're looking for. So we have 3 is equal to negative c, and remember b was equal to pi over 6. To solve for c, I multiply both sides by pi over 6. 3 times pi over 6 is equal to negative c. This gives us 3 pi over 6, and that's negative, and it reduces down to negative pi over 2. 
This means that our final equation should look like this. y is equal to our amplitude, which was 2, sine our cycle, pi over 6 times x, our c value, negative pi over 2, plus d, which was 12. That's the answer to the question, and that is how to use period functions to model behavior.